All right, welcome everyone to the first episode of the Yellow Kings podcast. You a know podcast what's good for only the Yellow Kings and princes. My name is Andrew, better known as Ming Ming Duck on social media, and this is my co-host. Tell him who you are. My name is Toyon Kim. Uh, yeah, my name is Toyon Kim. I'm known as your average tech bro on social media. But yeah, today the first topic we want to talk about for our first ever podcast is. Dumb things we did as kids, or still do, to be more white, and, and not necessarily like more white in terms of like to be more Caucasian, but kind of just like the broader sense of like fitting into an American society as like Asian Americans. Because uh, mm -hmm. I, I think I think we both grew up in like pretty Asian centric areas, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, like you you we, came from well, OC, I think we, right? we both grew up in SoCal. Yeah, yeah like Asian centric SoCal. SoCal, like not. Not not fucking Newport Beach, like like no no no. We grew no. up in like my my billboards when I, when I was walking around as a kid were in Chinese, like around my city. Oh yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. Like I grew up where like okay, I didn't grow up directly in places. I don't want to wait. So I don't want to disclose exactly where I live, but I'll I'll just say this. Like yeah. I definitely grew up in places where advertisements, newspapers, always in Korean, always in Chinese. Surprisingly, no Japanese, but Korean Chinese population super dense. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I think that kind of like shaped our our perspective of the world. I don't know about you, because so I went to UC San Diego, right? Which is like, mm -hmm. I think the funniest thing about going to the school was everyone's like, "Oh, this school is so Asian," because the school is like fifty percent Asian uh, and like half white, right? And I'm like, I don't yeah, know. I, I'm doing the math doesn't make sense here, but like ten percent other ethnicities. Um, mm -hmm. But I remember when I first went to school, like everyone was like, "Dude, this school is so Asian." For me, I was like, "Dude, this school is so white. There's so many white people here." Because my high school <laughs> was like. 70 percent so i went to school in mari park I, I i don't care i'll tell mm. you where i live i went to school in mari mm. park uh my school was 70 percent asian and like 30 percent hispanic latino we probably had like i can count my fingers how many white kids and black kids we had at our school like literally wow yeah yeah i don't That's know did you, have a, did you have a same experience like what, what was your demographic of your high school yeah so my high school was like 60 percent white but then 15 percent oh. asian yeah i went to a very white high school but oh, then okay. there is a decent amount of asians so asians was like the second largest population i think it's been growing a lot more lately oh. um and then like five percent black and like miss uh, like native american hispanic latino i think lat so i think it was actually whites asians latino and then black and then native americans and other people um so yeah very white place and i guess a good transition is saying like you know what what were some of the things that you did so that yeah. to try to fit in more with white people? It probably wasn't in high school and middle school. It was probably more in college for you then. Yeah, because I, I, in high school, I was like, there, there's nothing to fit in. I was like, yo, I was, all right. So I'm like your very basic SoCal Asian boy, okay? Like, I, I, I swam, you know, either you swam, you played basketball, you played badminton. And I went home, I played League of Legends, <laughs> right? And I yeah. studied. That's yeah. it. Like, school, sports, League of Legends homework, study, rinse and repeat. And when I went to college, it was like kind of like the first time where I was like, oh shit, there's like a lot of diversity at the school again. Like many people see it differently, but I thought there's a lot of diversity. And I, I think the, I think yeah. like my first sign of like things, I was like, oh shit, I need to like, I want to fit in a little bit more. And it's actually like a good reason why I did this was I joined a white fraternity. So, so when I was in college, like there were, were you in a frat by the way? I was. We can get into that later. Oh, dude, yeah. this is what I love about this. We actually know nothing about each other. Like, all I know yeah, is that like, yeah. we kind of think the same, but actually, I know nothing about you as a person in your background. So yeah. like, I'm actually learning yeah, a lot about yeah. you as you talk. Um, yeah, I know, for sure. But but I joined, I joined like, uh, IFC, which is like the white for inter for inter I don't know. IFC, it's like the white fraternities, like the council of white fraternities. And there's also like the Asian fraternities, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. So yeah. my sophomore year in college, I was like, uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to pledge a fraternity. And I pledged basically or I, I rushed for two different fraternities. I rushed for an Asian one. I rushed for Lambda, Lambda Phi Epsilon. Oh, God, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got a bit. I got a bit for them. And I also oh rushed God. for a, um, a I won't say white fraternity, but like a traditional fraternity called Fiji, Phi yeah. Gamma Delta. Right. OK. Um, and then I got bids from both. And that moment, I had to decide which one I wanted to pick, right? And I ended up picking, like, the traditional American fraternity just because solely, uh, honestly, this is, sounds so stupid. Okay, there's two reasons. I'll get in the second one in a bit. But the first reason was, like, I was like, dude, I need to learn how to talk to white people. Because, dude, because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was like, I need to learn how to talk to white people because I don't know about you. When I first started making friends with white people in college, I'm like, yo, what the fuck is going on here? Like, there's we're making conversation, but something's not clicking. Like, you guys have a very <laughs> different sense of humor than I have. Like, I, I don't, uh. like, I don't, <laughs> like, yeah. Let me, very, let me let me stop. <laughs> Go ahead. Let me stop you there. Literally, same thing happened to me in college too. I I'm not even joking because when I was in college, so I went to Dartmouth College on the East Coast, very white school. Um, but while I was there, so you couldn't. Similarly, I rushed my sophomore year, but the because and that's because you're not allowed to rush your freshman year. Like the school oh, doesn't allow it. Okay. But then, so there's no Asian fraternities don't exist. It's only like traditional like American fraternities, and a lot of them are local as well. Not that many national chapters as well. Mm. So. And Greek life is huge at Dartmouth. I think almost like 70% of people are affiliated on campus. Oh, okay. It is gigantic there. Um, but so when I was rushing my sophomore year, so during my freshman year, actually, I most of my friends were people in like the Korean Student Association. I'm Korean. I love hanging out with other Asian people because like even in high school, most the most of the school is white, but I hung out mostly with Asian people. So similarly at Dartmouth, a very similar demographic in terms of like white people and Asian people split. But... And like my first year, hung out with mostly Asian people. And then my second year of college, when I rushed, similarly, all of my Korean friends were rushing this one fraternity that had a lot more Asian people in it. Yeah. But then I rushed. I, I'm not. It's the same exact thing. Dude, then, dude we have the same exact I, story, too. I'll, I'll get, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Continue. No, literally. So then. But then I decided to rush a white, more white fraternity just because oh. I guess I, I wanted to experience something different. Um, just because like I wanted to meet more white people have a little bit more of a diverse friend group as well just because yes. i was so embarrassed it's like you know it's never it's like when you see a bunch of white people hanging out together they're never going to be like oh my god all you do is hang out with white people but for me like there's so many times where people would roast me being yeah, like what the fuck is up with that you, it's like why yeah, are you like i got so, comments like that in my tiktok people are like I, I i film a video like me and my friends they'll be like, one of the comments is like why you only have asian friends i'm like i don't fucking know maybe because i'm asian or something you know yeah it's like <laughs> no like I would, I got so many comments, even in my fraternity as well. They're like, yo, you only hang out with the Asian people, man. Why don't you hang out with, other, with us too? And I was like, I don't know. Like, that's where I feel more comfortable. And honestly, like looking back on it, I can't necessarily, I regret it. Like I've met like a couple of nice people there, but like, if I'm be really being honest, I spent way more time hanging out at like the more Asian fraternity just because like, that's where most of my friends were. And like, that's where people, I felt more comfortable with those people. So like looking back on it, it's like, I sold myself out to try to fit in to like a more white space and i did not really enjoy it it was not a good time for me and like similarly to you it's just like they like there's just like a cultural difference i don't know like i just cannot I can't really pinpoint what it is it's so like subconscious it's just like something's not clicking when i talk to you we have good conversation but something's just not like going off it's like it's like i got you i got you you know yeah yeah no totally i totally agree with that and i think this is i would i would i'm curious to hear what i'm curious to hear what other listeners think about this topic about what i'm going to say right here because i guess in my opinion i think that if you take two people with the exact same personality like they're essentially the same person but one is the same ethnicity as you and one isn't i feel like you're gonna be closer to the person that is the same ethnicity as you um just because it's like you share so much of that cultural part and i think that's like those cultural nuances are missing when you're not really when someone's not the same ethnicity as you, I'm not saying that you can't be great friends. Like you can have, like I have really close friends that are not Asian as well, but yeah. like, there's like something very different about hanging out with somebody that is the exact same ethnicity as you. And as for, for us, like other Asian dudes, you know, like it's different. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I also get along with like other, I guess like minorities as well. Dude, like, I get I get a lot of like Latinos. Dude, I uh, I don't know if I can say this, but I love black people. I think they're so funny. Oh and, my god! And <laughs> I think they're so funny, dude. They, they they crack the best jokes. The way they talk, I'm like, dude, you guys are so fucking hilarious. Um, <laughs> and I get along with people like Middle Eastern dudes. Like one of like my closest coworkers when I was working at banking, he was uh, he's like Persian, and and it's just like. I don't know, maybe it's like the minority or like the immigrant struggle that we all just bond and connect with. They're just like, no, sorry, I didn't grow up in a in a loving family household. My my parents kind of <laughs> kind of like yelled at me all the time. I, I totally feel the same way. It's like you're right. Like even in college too, like the groups of people, like I 
we got along with like all the other minority groups as well, like the Native American community, like the Black community, the Latinx community. Like, yeah, talking to them was way more natural. Way like it didn't it didn't feel different. Whereas like I don't know why, but like hanging out in like the more majority white spaces, it always I just felt so invisible there. Like whenever there were like parties or something, I, and like I just feel like I didn't exist. People just didn't know realize I was there. You know, I don't know. You felt the same way. Oh god, we're going so deep down this rabbit hole right now. Um, I don't want to turn this into like an Asian male hate podcast, but it's like it's like. No, but fuck it, we gotta talk about this. We gotta talk about this for a second. Do you ever felt like it was you that had to open up and talk to like white people, and white people would never open up and talk to you first? Like you needed to hundred like, percent up your game to be like, "Yo, what's up, bro? Hey, yeah, you want to you want to play some beer pong? Oh shit, yeah, you want to shotgun this beer? Okay, we we didn't do that, but you know what I mean, right? It's like. If you didn't open and talk to them, they wouldn't come to you. Did you ever feel like that? No, one hundred percent. And I especially felt that way. You know, like, it's, yeah, I totally felt that way during frat parties. Like, if I just stood in the corner, no one was gonna talk to me. I always had to go over to them and like start a conversation. Like, and it was just what's interesting though is the fact that one of my good friends who was in that fraternity with me was also Asian. He was Korean, but he's from a more a much more white place. Like, he didn't grow up in California. He grew up in Kentucky. And he oh. seemed to be like <clears throat> super natural there. That's what I want to talk about that too. I want to talk about that too. Cause, cause I think, I think that's a thing though. So, so that I, I know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm so, so dang training. Um, I, I don't want to say his name, but there was this guy in our training class. He's from Kentucky as well. I think he's Chinese or Korean. I forgot his last name is like Lee. So you mm. never know. It's like, it could be Chinese or Korean. Oh, it's a toss up. It's a toss up. <laughs> it's a toss up. It's a toss up. You know, it's an L I or O E E. Um, but, <laughs> but I mean, that's how you differentiate. It's an L I, you're Chinese. It's an L E E. No, you're probably no. Korean. You could still be Chinese because some, you can still it up be Chinese your documents. for sure. Um, for sure. For sure. But, but like he had a Southern accent and like he, Again, I don't want to be like white versus Asians, but like he hung out with like all the white guys in during training. Like he he seemed to have no problem getting along with them. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he did, but I do mm -hmm. think where you grew up, if you grew up around a like, white, predominant white community, hung out predominant white people, I think that does help. I think it really does. I think it's like a lot just do with like your upbringing, and who you hung out with as a kid, and for both of us, like we hang out with Asians, um, and we just naturally like gravitate towards them. So maybe yeah. it has a lot to do with that as well. I totally agree. I think it's just like, I think a lot of it is just like in your head as well. I think in the end, it's like, you can like, I'm so confident. I know for a fact that like a lot of the guys in like a lot of the white people in my fraternity, like they're not bad people. They're funny. They're sociable. It was more so like, I just got in my own head and I'm sure to some degree they got in their own heads as well, where they're like, oh shoot, I've never really had an Asian friend before. Yes. Oh shoot, yes. for me, I've never really had a white friend before. So it's like, we mutually psych ourselves it's out two because it's different from what yeah totally totally yeah 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 no yeah. i i totally i totally agree with that um i, I yeah. guess just to wrap this up i think what you said earlier is so funny because like so i know joined a more a traditional american fraternity right but what, what ended up happening is in that fraternity there was still like a bubble of like asian guys like i think like 30 percent already asian so it was still like a pretty asian like yeah. american fraternity i just ended up hanging out with them mm -hmm. all the time so, dude so 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 yeah it didn't even matter i just let it hang out with the asians and fraternity anyways i mean it might yeah i mean yeah we, we'll wrap it up there we'll wrap it up there yeah no <laughs> no, no, no. I, say, say what you gotta I say say that. what you gotta say <laughs> what, what oh no no i mean what i was what i was gonna say was just like this is a bit tangential but it's like even in my fraternity i would say maybe there's 30 guys per year so there's and there's three years there i think each year had maybe like two or three east asian guys or you know like asian general like south asian and east asian there was only like two or three per year um so it was just like such a small set of them and um yeah it's just kind of crazy yeah yeah